Hey guys, it's the first time you heard my voice in a YouTube video, and that's pretty cool. What's even cooler is that I recreated the app Super Mario Run in Game Builder Garage. If you don't know what Game Builder Garage is, it's a game released on the Nintendo Switch that allows you to create your own games. It uses a programming language that includes nodons, and they're basically a way for the user to visualize the code. Also, I want to bring up how about 4% of my viewers are actually subscribed. So if you want my videos to show up in your subscription feed, that way you don't have to search for it, it would make sense to subscribe. Of course, you don't have to. But please do consider it. Before I started working on the project, I decided that I would recreate the tutorial level. I then analyzed it and planned out everything that I was going to create. So first I started creating the layout for the beginning of the level using the simple objects. The coins are just basic cylinders that can be destroyed when it comes to contact with the player. In order for the player to die in the pit, I added a restart node on to a trigger node on. The next thing I worked on was the semi-platforms. How it works is when the player jumps above the platform, they touch a sensor, which then teleports a box that the player can walk on beneath them. So for the enemies, I started off by making them spheres and cylinders, just as placeholders, as I plan on creating custom models for them in the future. But when I first did that for the Super Mushroom, I realized I had no idea why I was doing it, and decided to just use spheres instead. Here I was working on the player kicking the shell. I added a touch sensor which detected if the player made contact with the shell and destroyed it. And in return, it launches an identical sphere, giving it the illusion that the player kicked the shell. And I also created a simple UI with a timer and coin counter. Every time a cylinder gets destroyed, whenever it makes contact with a player, it then raises the count up by one for the coin counter. For the timer, it starts at 60 seconds and then counts down until it reaches zero. Once it reaches zero, it then restarts the game. Once the enemies were finished, I started working on the question mark block by creating the pixel art. The code was pretty straightforward. Once the player collides with the trigger, it launches a coin which then gets destroyed off screen and gets added to the coin counter. The texture also changes and altogether does this. Now the bricks is very similar. Of course, it has a touch sensor, but it doesn't launch a coin. If there happens to be a coin above it, it deletes it off screen and adds to the coin count. And later on, I program it so that you can only break the bricks if you've already consumed the mushroom. Now the last major part of the gameplay that I needed to work on was a super mushroom. This was by far the hardest, because I needed to take account of two things. Changing the player's size and keeping the camera focused on the player after they consumed the mushroom. Now the only solution that I knew of to making the player change size was to just make a completely separate player, but bigger. Once they would make contact with the Super Mushroom, they would both swap places, giving the illusion that the player grew in size. This came with a problem though, as when both players would swap, the camera would still stay focused on the one off screen as the other one would continue running on the level. I needed a way to keep the camera focused on both players. Now if you don't know, the camera nodon can only be attached to one player at a time. So when both of them swap, I need a way to somehow switch between cameras. This is when I thought of attaching the camera to an invisible moving object. It wouldn't have mattered if the player swapped, as the camera would just keep on moving forward. This came with another problem though. The character was always lagging behind and wasn't staying centered. To give you an idea of what I did to fix this, I used location sensors and attached it to the player and moving object, so that way when the player lags behind, it'll then teleport the moving object with the camera back to the position of the player. I started working on finalizing the textures and changing the screen ratio to make it feel like you were playing the game on a mobile phone or tablet, just like Super Mario Run. Before I show you the final project, I just want to show you what the code looks like for those of you wondering. The first thing you might think of are all the lines that run across the screen, and this could have been easily fixed using the wormhole nodons, and they basically make it look a lot nicer. You 
know, these lines remind me of the Among Us wiretap. Alright, so I have the finished project here, and um, you can see that I've only done two tutorial levels, so a lot of stuff I had to discover on my own in creating this project. First thing I want to point out, I made it so that Mario automatically jumps over those objects in the beginning, just like in the original game. Also, getting a mushroom counts as collecting one coin for some reason. If you haven't noticed already, the player can actually walk on coins, even though I set it to destructible. So yeah, it's a, it's a pretty weird mechanic. Also, for this part, for some reason, it's really hard to wall jump. It's really hard to get up here. Mainly because you, you can only wall jump on the right side and on the left side. Alright, see how the custom model of the mushroom doesn't roll properly? I was having that issue when I was trying to create custom models for the enemies, so I decided to just make them spheres instead. You can also go up here. And this happens. You, you get to skip the ending if you go up here. Here's the ending. Also, let me know the most coins you guys got. I think the highest I got was about like 57, 58, maybe 60. In the original Super Mario Run game, there's, n there's not fireworks when you complete the tutorial level. It just shows the castle just going up in flames. Because that's right after Bowser, um, I think, destroyed it or kidnapped or whatever. Thank you. 